You're watching Veterans Week coverage on ESPN, brought to you by USAA. This is Veterans Week on ESPN, presented by USAA. Fittingly, on this Veterans Day, we welcome you to Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. The fourth-ranked Tigers host their pals from Tallahassee, the Seminoles of Florida State. And with that, we recognize Florida State offensive line coach and Marine veteran Rick Trickett, who went to Vietnam as an 18-year-old in 1967. He said of the meaning of Veterans Day, you have to live it to understand. His offensive line will go up against arguably the best defensive front in all of college football. And that matchup could decide what happens on the scoreboard later today. And as you might have been able to notice, Clemson will be wearing their orange britches, and that can only mean a championship is at stake. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. It's Brian Greasy. I'm Steve Levy. And tradition starts way back to Danny Ford days when there's something on the line. North Carolina State just victorious, keeps the pressure on Clemson, who can win the Atlantic Division today. But they've got their sights set on a much bigger goal, and that's winning back-to-back -back national championships. It's all right there in front of them, right? But this is the time for the playoffs, right? This is a playoff game for Clemson. No room for error. They already lost that game to Syracuse. NC State, as you mentioned, keeps a little bit of pressure on them. So they have to win today if they want to repeat as national champions. But it's going to be a challenge. They had a physical game last week against NC State. Kelly Bryant was knocked around in that game. Didn't throw the ball terribly well. This defense got after Kelly Bryant. They hit him repeatedly. It'll be interesting to see. Does that have any effect on this game? And Kelly Bryant, in particular, had to get well this, this week, get in the uh, training room, and get back healthy. There's also a couple guys on the defensive side that were nicked up in that game. No Dexter Lawrence, the All-American defensive tackle in this game. And Kendall Joseph is questionable at the Mike linebacker position. Closes the gap a little yep. bit here today. Hey, not to sugarcoat, Florida State season is disappointing. They thought they had the making of something special, but if they can't go to the playoff, there's nothing the Seminoles would like more than to deny Clemson of that opportunity. And you can make the argument that the Seminoles will have as many NFL players on the field today as Clemson will, and no one knows more about that than our pal Todd McShay. Well, Steve, this defense is absolutely loaded. If they're going to win today, it's not going to be a shootout. The Knolls are going to have to turn this into a defensive battle. I think up front, Derek Noddy is a player to watch, number 91 defensive tackle. He's doing a great job. A year ago, he was the guy who would take on blockers. This year, he's fighting through blocks and finishing. Then behind him, Derwin James, the most important player on defense for Florida State in this game, and I think the most versatile safety in the country. Expect to see him close to the box, rushing the quarterback at times, helping in run support, working in coverage, but also as a spy against Kelly Bryant, whose best trait is running the football on desired runs or when he's throwing the football and decides nothing's open. So today, Florida State hasn't showed up every week. The guys, I think they're going to show up today, and they've got to bring the fight on the defensive side. The last eight years, the Atlantic Division of the ACC has been won by Florida State or Clemson. It always seems to come down to this game, and Clemson is in position to run down the hill and run off with the Atlantic Division today. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Coke Industries, Challenge Accepted, AT&T, and Taco Bell's new crispy chicken quesadilla, a deliciously unexpected pairing. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. And under cloudy skies, 49 degrees in Clemson, South Carolina, you're watching the ACC on ESPN. It's already a playoff game for the Clemson Tigers. Win and advance, live to see another day. Florida State has won the toss and deferred, so the Tigers will get the football first. On the line for Florida State, they take these streaks very, very serious in Tallahassee and elsewhere. You know, I can't get past the bowl appearances. 35 consecutive. 
And people will knock that, hey, there are a million bowls. Well, you know what? No one else has done it. Right. Nobody else has done it. And beyond just the bowl is the extra it's, time to practice yeah. and get ready for next year. Yeah, and that's a big deal to Jimbo Fisher and this entire program. You know, it hasn't gone their way the way they wanted it this year. But those bowl practices to get some young players some experience are invaluable. Florida State at three and five. There are three losses by six points or less. We asked Jimbo Fisher the story of the season. He didn't talk about the freshman quarterback. Didn't say we're not scoring enough. He said we're not getting enough defensive stops at the end of these close games. And I thought that was interesting. Florida State off a three-point win over Syracuse one week ago. Clemson comes off with Greece talked about that physical win at NC State 38 to 31 Travis Etienne is back to receive for Clemson the true freshman speedster and Logan Tyler will put it in the air and we are underway from Death Valley on a Saturday afternoon in November Etienne able to get out just to the 15 yard line excellent kick coverage to start the game for Florida State. Get our first look at Kelly Bryant. As we mentioned, that physical game a week ago wasn't terribly uh, successful throwing the ball down the field in that game against NC State, which is a very good defense. But I think there might have been a blueprint as to how to slow down this Clemson offense last week from NC State. And you know Florida State has the talent, but can they execute enough to keep this Clemson offense in check today? First down and 10. They'll open up at their own 17. Tavian Feaster is the lone setback. That's Ray Ray McLeod in motion, and there's a penalty to start the game. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense number 76, five yard penalty. That's down. Sean Pollard, the right tackle. Time for today's impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. And let's take a look at a key matchup here. Kelly Bryant at the quarterback position. He loves to run the football. He's very talented. Derwin James at the safety position. We're going to see him a lot spying Bryant and close to the line of scrimmage. After the penalty, it's first and 15. Bryant comes out throwing and overthrowing Hunter Renfro. He is such a reliable target on third down. They go to him on first down. Derwin James had the coverage. Well, wow, that, that, that throw was affected by the pressure from the outside. Trey Marshall, the safety, comes up and blows up Trent Tavian Feaster and forces a high throw from Kelly Bryant. The pressure from Florida State, they have to get consistent pressure on Kelly Bryant if they want to win today. On second and 15, draw to Feaster. Gets back some of that penalty yardage. Roderick Hoskins made the stop for Florida State. Feaster had an 89-yard rushing touchdown a week ago. Literally ran out the third quarter. Yep. Start to this game for Florida State is probably more important than any game that they've played all year. They have to have some confidence that they can come into Death Valley and compete with this Clemson team. Third and nine. Here's Bryant. Can't get out of the pressure! And he's dropped by Brian Burns! Burns comes up with his first full sack of the season. And Brian Burns is a talented hybrid type player. He's going to come right up the field on Pollard. Pollard's a good right tackle, just not ready for the speed of Brian Burns. And Pollard starts the game with a false start, then gives up a sack on third down, not the way that Dabo Sweeney wanted to start this football game. Will Spires will punt from his own end zone. Make contact from the three. DJ Matthews is back for it. And he'll let it bounce. And no matter where that rolls, Florida State will take over with excellent field position after handing Clemson a three and out to start. 44 yards on the punt. James Blackman, he's, he's never faced this kind of atmosphere, this kind of team on the road here in Death Valley. No, you know, the games that they've been on the road at Wake Forest, at Duke, and at Boston College, with all due respect to those places, it's not Death Valley. So he's got to manage the environment early in this game. And Cleveland Farrell told us he'd be telling Blackman about that. His own welcome to Death Valley. First down and 10. And they hand off to Cam Akers, the true freshman from Clinton, Mississippi. 
Johnson and Farrell make the stop in the middle of that line. You know, we thought coming into this season that Florida State could have a pretty good offense. We all know about DeAndre Francois, but you would never expect for those rankings, those national rankings and scoring yards and sacks allowed uh, to be the story of the season for Florida State. They've had injuries on the offensive line. They've had injuries at receiver and obviously at quarterback. They've lost a lot of production, but they do get a couple of those receivers back today in Auden Tate especially. Against Clemson, where Clemson is staying in the defensive backfield. Another matchup to watch today. The second and 11. Keep it on the ground, and Akers lowers his helmet and, and fires three, through for a few. Van Smith made the stop. We need some more impact players, McShay. Give you a matchup, Levy. Auden Tate, number 18, big possession receiver, great ball skills. Going up against 31, the cornerback, Ryan Carter for Clemson. I think he's their best cover corner. The problem is for Clemson in this game, he's giving up 8 inches and 40 pounds, so they're going to try to isolate him from time to time. Let's repeat that. 8 inches, a corner to a wide receiver. Here's third down and 8. This is the situation where Clemson really misses Marcus Edmond and Mark Fields. They don't really have a nickel corner they can put in. Off the play fake. Blackman to throw for the first time. He'll take a shot down the middle of the field. It was overthrowing Keith Gavin on third and eight. Trayvon Mullen had the covered step for step. It'll be interesting to track as this game goes on how Florida State decides to play it. Knowing that that secondary for Clemson is thin without Edmund and without Fields. Will they come out in some more three wide receiver sets and try to take advantage of that as the game goes on? Ray Ray McLeod, those of you Clemson fans who have been playing close attention, McLeod normally wears 34, but had to play some defense last week, so switched to 21. And he'll take the punt from 21, Logan Tyler. And McLeod didn't call for a fair catch. He'll look to make something out of nothing, put the ball on the ground, but was able to recover. Ray Ray McLeod, who ripped off a 77-yard punt return for a score last week, trying to make something happen there. Tonight on ABC, the game everybody's been talking about all week long. Notre Dame, Miami. I'm not sure you have to say anything else. That stands alone. Notre Dame, Miami should be unbelievable atmosphere tonight at the Hard Rock Stadium. The ESPN app is fans' best friends. Stream every ESPN and ABC College football game at home or on the go. Download the app to start streaming today. Miami at night. That should be something. Damian Feaster pick up a yard or two and bring up a second down. I think for, for Clemson, the biggest, the goal number one in this game, I think, is getting Kelly Bryant back on track with these wide receivers in the passing game. We know he's he's been fantastic running the football, but to get where they want to go, to get to back to another national championship, they're going to have to be better throwing the football, and I think it starts today. Here's Bryant. Looks to get out of there on the run. Making plays with his legs. First down and plenty more. Just shy of midfield. First time this afternoon we say hello to our pal Adnan Burke. <laughs> Adnan, thank you. As Feaster again tries to push towards midfield. Derek Noddy made the tackle the senior one of the leaders on that florida state defense a quiet they leader though yards. yeah you better get used Second to calling his name in this game though he is outstanding I and mean, coming into the year we knew that he was going to be one of the stalwarts up front along with the marcus christmas but Nadi has continued to get better i think he's one of the best defensive tackles in all of college football that bryant game for the first town was a run for 16. Bryant looks to his right and throws to Ray Ray McLeod. They set up the bubble screen and they hold him up long enough. Derwin James did to get another shot on him. Derwin James. From fellow cornerback Hamza Nasruddin, who got his first start the chief freshman a week ago, game of four. Brings up a big third down here. This is where Kelly Bryant, he's, 
legs and ability to escape and scramble have been deadly this season. Florida State has to rush him, but they have to contain him while they do so. That's Renfro in motion, their go-to guy on third down. Bryant looking that way. And first down yardage, Hunter Renfro. You get Hunter Renfro, one of the best third-round receivers in all of college football, matched up against a true freshman in Azrael Dean, and that's a mismatch. Bit of a high snap brought down. Hand it off to Adam. Choice in the backfield, and that's where he'll stay. Drop for a loss. Matthew Thomas. Good read from Matthew Thomas. Florida State is going to need Matthew Thomas to play big in this game. He's right here. He's going to read, and he's just going to beat Choice to the hole. Doesn't end up making the tackle, but rallies to the rest of these defenders, Josh Sweat and others, for a negative yardage play. Loss of five on the play. Second and 15. Fake the jet, and Bryant trying to turn the corner. Not going to happen. It's Matthew Thomas, his first there again. You know, going back to Kelly Bryant, I, I agree. The, the difference in early season, the first six games of the season with his deep ball compared to the last couple of games, really remarkable. I thought that was one of his strengths coming in as a quarterback, his touch, trajectory, accuracy, throwing the ball down the field. But for some reason, he's lost it, and his receivers also need to do a better job of going up and attacking the ball. That's going to be a big key in this game. Todd, I think it's because people are playing them tight man-to-man -man coverage. Early in the year, they're throwing against zones, and guys are running posts wide open. But when it's tight, he's struggling to complete them. Need a deep throw on third and 20 after back-to-back -back losing plays. Bryant will take off, and he'll get nowhere near the first down marker. Kelly Bryant last week in that physical game against NC State, he completed 20 passes and he ran 20 times. That's not the kind of balance you're looking for. Yeah, and what NC State did is they, they played one coverage. They played tight man-to-man -man coverage all game. They challenged Deion Kane. They challenged Ray Ray McLeod. The and they challenged Kelly five. Bryant. They threw 11 fades during the course of that game, Steve. They did not complete one of them. They got a couple pass interference, but that's got to be something that they execute on and take advantage of as they go forward. Here's Spires from his own 45. DJ Matthews calls for the fair catch at the 10. It's a 32-yard punt. We're scoreless early on. Clemson, South Carolina on this Veterans Day. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. And in part by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Always fun to play the where were you when. How about 1988? Florida State. The punt Ruski faked to oh, Leroy yeah. Butler. Who ran 78 yards setting up the game-winning field goal. That's Jeff Scott, the co-offensive coordinator. His dad, Brad, was the offensive coordinator. That was Long a tie State. game. And the two minutes left. I mean, think of the, the, the guts. Risks. The guts to make that call. Awesome. Seminoles were ranked 10th. Tigers were ranked third in the country at that time. Back in September of 1988. Second offensive possession for James Blackman. And the Seminoles down the middle of the field. Overthrew his intended target, Auden Tate. Trayvon Mullen actually had a chance to intercept that ball. Steve, we got to keep an eye on this Clemson defense. They're without their captain. You know, we talk about quarterbacks on offense. The quarterback of this defense has been Kendall Joseph, the Mike linebacker, all season long, and he's not in the game. He got hurt last week, hurt his knee last week in the, the NC State game, and I haven't seen him out there yet. J.D. Davis, who's a junior, number 33, right here is his replacement, looks like, for this game. Second down and 10. Clemson. A little run blitz. And Cam Akers able to rip off seven, bring up a third down and short. Came on Wallace, came up to make the tackle. It was Wallace who ended the game last week on an interception. Third and three. Going fast. Hand it off to Akers, cuts it back, has the first down. And he'll stay on his feet. 
It's Mullen who knocks him out, Todd. What a jump cut that was. I'm standing about 25 yards behind him. And the ability to, to sense the defensive line going one way, get the handoff and cut, cut and accelerate off of that cut. This young man, Cam Akers, is a special talent. And he's going to keep getting better and better. Boy, Todd, you hate to see a guy that has to follow in the footsteps immediately of a Dalvin Cook. But boy, this kid looks <laughs> like he is going to be special. It's a 12-yard gain there. You don't want to be the man who follows the man. Right. You want to be the next guy. <laughs> Here's Blackman on the run. Throwing down the sideline. And again, he airmails his target. And Blackman is down. Took a big shot. Tried to hook up with Maven Saunders. Austin Bryant put the lick on him. He took a big shot, Steve, but he didn't need to take a big shot here. He needs to throw this ball in the flat. It's just a naked route. The tight end, Ryan Izzo, is going to be in the flat. And Blackman, just dump it right there. You don't need to take that big hit, and that's just experience. That's a clean hit from Austin Bryant. And, and Blackman doesn't need to put himself in that situation, especially 6'5", 169 pounds. You had to wonder if that was a typo. 6'5", 169 pounds. Blackman has started 0 for 3, and he's got 3 to snap the ball. Little jet sweep on the inside handoff to Nooney Murray. And Ryan Carter comes up to make the stop. Here's Adnan Vern. Josh Jackson, that's his fourth interception in the last two days. And he doesn't just make interceptions. They're athletic. They're wide receiver kind of interceptions. I, I don't want to throw in his direction. Saying. Third down and four. See what direction Blackman is throwing. That's Murray shifting to his left. Here comes the pressure. Oh, he's rocked. Ball is out. And it's Clemson's football. Trey Lamar able to knock the football out and recover. What a shot that Blackman took, and he is still down, number one in white. See DeAndre Francois. That looks eerily familiar to the last couple of years for Florida State, taking shots. But this is all on James Blackman. Here's the blitz right here. Akers makes a great block. But this is the quarterback. You have to know if you're protected or not. He had no idea, and Trey Lamar made him pay. If I'm Clemson, why wouldn't you continue to blitz a young quarterback no like James Blackman as a true freshman? And I credit Blackman. You know, you're saying get rid of it. That's not necessary. He's got guts. He's fearless. He's, he's not afraid. Just needs a little more intelligence. Yeah. A few more of those hits. He'll figure it out. Loss of 15. Off the turnover now, the quick change. Bryant will throw and complete to the 15. DeAndre Overton able to make the grab. His 10th catch of the season. Wait, how many Clemson receivers can they go to? They, they are stacked the wideout position. Second down and five from the 15. Handoff to ETN. Down to the 12, Trey Marshall came up from his strong safety spot to make the tackle. Third down. Yeah, how many times has Florida State's defense been put in these bad situations on the season, right? They minus 10 in turnover margin. They put, they've been put behind the eight ball time and time again. Can they rise up here and keep Clemson out of the end zone? Third and two. It's Richard, Richard shifting to the right. And Bryant will look to keep it. He has just enough for the first down. His forward progress will move the chains. First down, Tiger. First and goal. Say what you want about Kelly Bryant throwing the football, and I think he's, he's going to continue to grow in that area and get better, but you cannot question his toughness. He's got two really tough quarterbacks yep. in this game, but at the end of the NC State game last week, Kelly Bryant ran with toughness. That, that jumped out on the tape watching him. And when the game's on the line in tight situations, they're going to have the ball in number two's hands. First down and goal from just inside the 10. It's ETN for a couple. Bring up a second down. We talked to Bryant in practice on Thursday, and 
when I asked him about taking all those hits from a week ago, he says, no problem. I've always made plays with my legs. Yep. And he wants to keep doing that. And he is their leading rusher yep. coming into the game today. Which is the biggest difference from a year ago, quite honestly, because uh, Deshaun was more of a thrower. Second to go. Here's Bryant rolling to his right. He'll tuck it. Try to make a move, take some people on, and crash down to the three. Well, Derek Hoskins might have gotten the worst of that collision. I think the biggest difference is, is the want to. Sean Watson always wanted to be a pocket passer that could scramble and extend plays. Kelly Bryant's just as happy running as he is throwing. He wants to have that element, and it's been a big part of his success so far this season. Yeah, 6'4", 220, why wouldn't he, right, Todd? Exactly. I mean, do what you do best, and uh, you see what a physical presence he can be in a run game. Third and goal. That's McLeod in motion. They fake it to hit. Brian will keep it on the ground. And he'll get there. Touchdown. That's Kelly Bryant's 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Clemson takes the lead. the extra point. Clemson draws first blood here this afternoon. And they lead seven to nothing. Yeah, that came off up front. Here's Derek Nadi right here. He's the one that's got to make the play. He beats the block. But look at the strength of Kelly Bryant to run through that tackle and continue and finish into the end zone after the big turnover from James Black. You come on the road, Florida State does, in this environment in Death Valley and turn the football over, bad things gonna happen. Back in Death Valley, 7-0 the home side. And Florida State will get the football. We'll check on their freshman quarterback. Here's Alex Spence off the tee. Spence, who kicked it out of bounds two times a week ago. Kicking has been an issue. Amir Rasool recovered and able to bring it out. We send it back to Adnan Burke. That keep us posted all afternoon. That's a fascinating game. That Georgia offensive line, can they handle what is one of the more with a better Auburn defensive lines? And can they continue to run the ball with Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle like they have? That's a key in that game. Florida State will try to keep James Blackman upright on this series. From the 14, they start on first and 10 with Cam Akers. And he'll sidestep one hit and be dropped down at the 19-yard line by Cleland Farrell. we got to keep an eye on James Blackman. I think he opened the wrong way on that last play. And how much of an effect are these hits going to have on him early in this game? We talked with Jimbo Fisher. He was a little bit concerned about his quarterback as a true freshman coming into this kind of environment in Death Valley against this defense and this defensive front. And it has not been a pretty start to the game for number one White. Blackman had one rough practice this week, but Jimbo told us bounced back with two great practices after that. So he's got all the DNA of a great quarterback. On the ground to Akers. He'll bring up a third and short. J.D. Davis made the stop. Yeah, he, he said he, he loves to learn. You know, he makes mistakes. Obviously, as a freshman, going to make mistakes. But he'll come back. He'll tap Jimbo on the shoulder, ask him questions. Hey, why was that right? Why was that not right? What can I do different the next time? Third and one. Hand off to Akers. And he has the first down. And Fisher also said he's really a throwback kid. Jimbo said he's noticed the last five years kids are different. Steve, look at this 213-pound Cam Aker against 250 with Lamar. And Akers runs right over him. Wow, that was impressive on a third and short. And of course, it was Trey Lamar who got the big hit on Blackman last series. 
Jacquez Patrick checks in now for Florida State, along with the fullback Gabe Neighbors. And Blackman to throw. Takes a shot down the middle of the field, and the outstretched fingertips of Keith Gavin, and he couldn't haul it in. Trayvon Mullen on the coverage. Good coverage by Trayvon Mullen, and it's just Gavin's got to make that play. I mean, you got a quarterback back here under pressure to distress. Mullen got that left arm in there at the very end. I think that prevented that reception. And Mullen, they are dependent on him. Obviously, with no Mark Fields and no Marcus Edmond, Mullen has had to step up and up to the task on that play. Keith Gavin opened the season seven receptions for 59 yards against Alabama. Here's Patrick, the ball carrier, gain of two. That Alabama game must seem like a, a decade ago for Florida State. With, with everything that has transpired, you remember the high hopes they came into the season opener with. I think one of the things that's been overlooked and the biggest factors for Florida State season is remember after that Alabama game, you had Hurricane Irma, and then they missed two games. And after those two games, they hadn't played a game in three weeks. Then they play NC State, who was another physical team, and they could never get their confidence going. And with a young quarterback like James Blackman, I think that set them back. Third down and eight. Maybe the final play of the first quarter. Here's Blackman to throw. Feel the pressure to go down. James Blackman is sacked again. That time it's Austin Bryant. And that's the way the first quarter will come to an end. You get in third and six plus situations against this defensive line. And even without Dexter Lawrence, he's more of a run stopping guy. But Christian Wilkins, Austin Bryant, those guys are coming after you. And Jimbo Fisher knows it could be a long day. I think DeAndre Francois is checked out. Think again. No, look at him. He's, a, he's in every conversation. After that long throw that Gavin dropped, he's talking right here. To, that's Ermon Lane, who's a receiver. He's talking about, listen, we have to make these plays. Justin's out there trying to make plays. This is the difference between winning and losing on the road. And uh, it's impressive that DeAndre Francois continuing to lead from the sideline, even though he's hurt. First time he's traveled with the team since the injury and has been around much more. An update on his rehab as we go along. Logan Tyler in the air and fair catch. Ray Ray McLeod. How's Francois doing? Hey, he's throwing the football in warm-ups. Yeah, this was him before the game on the field, and uh, it's great to see him. What a what a, a heartbreaking injury he had in the first game of, of the year. And talking with the coaches, uh, you know, he's an emotional leader. He's he's a guy that has fun and uh, brings some spirit to this team. They think he'll be ready to go in spring ball, which is great news. He made his first public comment since the injury last week. He said, look, it hurts watching from the sidelines. He's been rehabbing a little bit, trying to get that, that power back in his quads with some calf raises, but not pushing the knee, not too hard, not, not yet. Well, and if there's any injured player that can affect a, a team, it's, th it's that kind of leader. Quarterbacks have relationships with everybody on the offense, and a lot of times everybody on the team, and, and no matter who you are, you're going to listen to your starting quarterback. There was a holding on the return by a mere trap, and that pushes them back. The Tigers. That's that Travion Thompson one, on the Thompson. receiving end. His first catch of the afternoon as we open up quarter well, number two. Steve number Levy, four. Brian Greasy, well, and Todd McShay ten. from Clemson, South Carolina on this Veterans Day 2017. Could make the argument that every day should be Veterans Day. On second down. Ball spotted out at the 28. And here's Bryant to throw. Out to C.J. Fuller. Initiating some contact. Bring up third down. Kelly Bryant really struggled in the first quarter one week ago. He went 3 for 10 for 23 yards. That was in the first quarter. Actually, the, uh, the remarks from, from Dabo after last week, Bryant said he was awful. I mean, that was the quote. He said Kelly Bryant was awful. But you know what? He was good enough to still win the game. Well, he was proud of him, right, to play that way, but to still win. So yeah, Bryant, first down, knifing through that Florida State defense. And Dabo said he learned a little bit about Bryant, too, because that was the first time on the road, that kind of environment, and playing from behind. Yep. That has not been the case. 
Clemson has torn up some of the tough opponents they've had on the road. And every coach this wants is... to know what they have in their quarterback. When you face adversity, how's he going to respond? And he wasn't throwing the ball well, but he didn't lose sight. He didn't lose a leadership. He didn't lose that focus in his eyes, and he made the plays in the running game when they had to to win against a good team on the road. Got that first out. They're out to the 42. Hand it off to Fuller. Out to the 45-yard line. Frederick Jones made the stop. Now that th this is this is just not fair. Like, <laughs> you just don't do this. Are you right? talking to Hoffman right now? Is <laughs> yeah, that who you're talking yeah, to? Yeah. But 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 this is this is the difference, right? <laughs> that that's the production uh, that that really uh, has been the difference for Clemson offensively. Looking to his right and throw to his left. It's Travion Thompson again, and he'll suffer a loss on the play. Derwin James, the all-world. Defensive back for Florida State, but in fairness, the unfairness of that yeah, that's, that's that would, be, would be unfair to any quarterback, yeah, not absolutely. just Kelly Bryant. Absolutely. But Bryant has thrown just seven touchdown passes all this season. That was two games for Deshaun Watson, maybe, maybe a game and a half. Yeah, you know, people forget Deshaun had had some interceptions last year too, but really, you know, he got hot at the right time, and that time is coming for tons of potential. Third and nine. What a throw. Zipped it into the window to Travian Thompson for first down yardage. This is what the Clemson faithful want to see. Standing in the pocket, reading the defense, stepping into your throw on time, and splitting a zone defender. Travion Thompson gets a first down. 15 yards there. An excellent protection up front. Hearn, Falsinelli, and Crowder in the middle of that Clemson offensive line. Here's Bryant. Again, the protection is excellent. The throw is excellent as well. There's Hunter Renfro. The ball comes out. They're going to say he was down. Now they're going to say incomplete pass. Take a look at this anticipation from Kelly Bryant. Renfro coming from the left. That ball is thrown on time. And that ball comes out. Remember, as. As a rule to be a catch, you have to control that ball through the impact with the ground. And they're saying that that ball came out and Renfro did not control it. Might take a look at this in the replay booth. Come out. Renfro's got Renfro. it. First charge. It looked like out. it was coming out before he even hit the ground. So I think that was a great call by this officiating crew. Led by our referee, Jeff Flanagan. Tony Gray is our headlinesman. We're back. Nothing has changed. The call on the field was incomplete pass, and that's the way it'll stay. Yep, I think it was a good call by our officiating crew. And Hunter, that looked like that ball was coming out before he hit the ground, and the ball obviously came out after he hit the ground. Aflac! Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Who holds the record for most consecutive winning seasons in NCAA history? Wow. Florida State has, what, 40? Yes. Ryan, quick throw. Deion Kane, nothing doing. Florida State was all over that, led by Brian Burns. 1976, Greece, was the last time Florida State failed to have a winning season. That was Bobby Bowden's first year. They went 5-6. and six. But The answer is, when in doubt, Notre Dame. <laughs> 42 consecutive winning seasons. That account was two millenniums ago, right? That's not even 500. That's winning season. That's that's pretty impressive. Third and 13, cross midfield. Seven up and Clemson. Here's Bryant. He'll take a shot as he releases, and it's batted up in the air and knocked away. Crowd screaming for a flag. Levante Taylor had the coverage. Bryant Burns put the lick on Bryant. We'll check the flag. I'm not sure what Levante Taylor was doing there. It looked like he was tackling the receiver for about five yards. It was an easy call. Pass interference. Defense. Number one. 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, Taylor's in great position here. He's got his hands all over Ray Ray McLeod. It's a good call by the official. And he Pressure on Kelly Bryant. Both of these quarterbacks. You got to be careful. But these two defensive lines are outstanding. So you can't hold the football. Can't take two hitches to try to throw the ball down the field. Ball's got to come out on time. Easy call. Off the pass interference. 
Bryant will delay and then run the football. Down to the 24-yard line. This offensive line for Clemson starting to get their footing. Mitch High at the uh, All-American left tackle. Dinged up a little bit last week, but back ready. He's playing at high level. Second and five. Bryant to throw. And to complete, Deion Kane. And the same issues continue to haunt Florida State. The turnovers and penalties, obviously a turnover early in this game, and they came into the game ranked last in the ACC in turnover margin and 12th in the ACC in penalties. There's a critical penalty there, and they've been doing little things like this all season long. Six turnovers. That's, that's by accident. You get more than that. Here's Feaster, the ball carrier. And we talked to the Florida State coaching staff, and especially their defense coordinator, Charles Kelly. He said, look, we've had three balls in our hands every single game, and for whatever reason, not been able to hang on to those interceptions or fumbles. Look at the difference from last year to this year. I mean, that's just, it's amazing. And uh, you don't just have a three and five season because you lose your quarterback to start the year. It has to be a complete meltdown from a team standpoint. Takeaways have certainly been a part of it. Second and seven. Brian throwing. Amari Rogers receiving. Looks like he'll be just short of the first down. Third and about six inches. Amari Rogers, along with T. Higgins, guys who really haven't been able to crack the lineup because they're so deep at wide receiver. A couple of five star recruits coming out of high school. Well, you're going to see more and more of them. Rogers, you can't keep off the field. Higgins is. You know, he's a, a special talent that uh, Jeff Scott was telling us yesterday. they got to manufacture four or five touches for him. Third and one, the big spot. Of course it's Bryant. He'll keep it. Has the first down. He crashes down inside the five-yard line. That's Bryant's tenth carry of the afternoon. And Clemson's going to protect any of that power inside run with some kind of a speed sweep element. That time it was Amari Rogers coming. You have to respect the perimeter game. 45 yards rushing. Bryant will look to add to that, trying to make some people miss. Stays on his feet. And in the end, he'll probably pick up a yard. Matthew Thomas and Brian Burns will bring him down. It's a big spot here. Florida State, obviously, on the ropes here. They go down two touchdowns with the, their struggles offensively almost seem insurmountable. you got to expect Kelly Bryant to keep the ball here in this situation. Second and goal, ball came out, fumble, and it's Florida State. Brian Burns able to knock it free from Tavian Feaster. And that's the turnover that they have not been able to recover all season, especially down at the three-yard line. And exactly why Charles Kelly was fired up on the sideline. We mentioned it, only six turnovers so far this year. Brian Burns, give him credit, right off the edge. Anytime you have a zone read situation, you're forcing the quarterback to make this decision to give or pull, and you charge that mesh, you've got a chance to get a turnover. Demarcus Christmas recovers Seminoles football when we come back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by USAA. Show your appreciation this Veterans Day using hashtag honor through action. And KFC. Try KFC's $5 fill-ups. They're finger-licking good. Just some of the many Florida State and Clemson alumni serving overseas as part of our Veterans Week coverage. Presented by USAA, we salute all of our service members, both past and present. Cannot thank you enough. James Blackman in Florida State backed up. Cam Akers will try to get some breathing room, maybe a yard out to the four. Steve, I went back and looked at this. Take a look at Tavian Feaster. He's going to get the football. Here's Burns coming off the edge. This wasn't on the quarterback, Kelly Bryant. I think he gives the ball to Feaster, and the right hand of Burns comes in and hits that football out of Feaster's hand. So put that one on number 28, and we'll see if Florida State can do anything offensively to capitalize on it. I was surprised somebody other than Bryant carried the football there. Yeah, me too. Second and nine. Blackman a throw, hit as he releases, and nearly intercepted. Albert Huggins providing the pressure. 
So no Dexter Lawrence. Enter Albert Huggins, number 67. Not, not many people know about Huggins, but uh, he is an excellent football player. Has played in spurts when Dexter Lawrence has needed a break. And a nice job of him not driving Blackman into the ground. If you're going to hit him, don't get a penalty. Just affect the quarterback and do it in a clean fashion. Blackman has completed just one of six passes so far. And here's third and nine. He needs a okay. completion here. And with two to snap it. Timeout. Florida State. Seminoles first have taken timeout. their first timeout. 7.42 to play in the first half. Florida State black, backed up, trailing by seven. On that last play, you saw Blackman, the quarterback for Florida State, really struggling to get the communication from the sideline. He didn't understand whether it was a hand, the hand signal. He couldn't relay the message then when he finally got the play to his offensive line and the rest of the teammates around him. Akers were saying, timeout, let's get a timeout. And finally, they got one. There's a lot of confusion here. Surprised that Jimbo Fisher doesn't have a way to signal into the entire offense rather than just the quarterback. It's too loud to hear. Recovered by Alec Everly. That could have been six for Clemson. Instead, Florida State and Everly amazingly able to come up with the football ability to put it out of there. Wow, so much going on here. First of all, I have no idea why Jimbo Fish is trying to throw a seven-step drop out of his own end zone here against this rush. That's the first mistake. What a heads-up play by Everly. Could save seven points here, give him a little bit of room to punt the football. And James Blackman takes another huge hit. This time, Christian Wilkins. And Wilkins introducing himself to the young quarterback for the first time in this game. Everly saves the day for now. Logan Tyler, six inches from the back line. And he's able to get it out. Ray Ray McLeod, what a punt that is. McLeod from his 35. The big punt leads to a big return. Here's Ray Ray McLeod down the sideline, and he's pushed out at the 26-yard line. Here's Adnan. Excellent timing, Adnan. That's a 59-yard punt by Logan Tyler. And Ray Ray, a 38-yard return. The same thing happened last week against North Carolina State. They had a, a booming kick. You almost outkick your coverage, as the saying goes. And you give Ray Ray McLeod that much space with good blocking. And unfortunately, he didn't take that one back. Kelly Bryant from the 28. Here's Travis Etienne making it look easy. To the house, touchdown, Clemson. Extra point on the way. So get 28 yard score. Got to give it a, a heads up to this offensive line and the tight end. Here's Mylon Richard. He's just going to come down. He gets the block and they pull around with Hearn. This is just straight power football, Steve. And you get a guy like ETN with that speed, that kind of a crease, and he's going to hit his head on the goalpost. <laughs> Set up by the big punt return from Ray Ray McLeod. is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these all season long. 14-0. Clemson. See if Florida State can get some kind of spark on a return. Amir Rasul and Keith Gavin are back deep. Off the touchback, back to Adnan.
And now, thank you. A spectacular college football Saturday across the U.S. of A. First down and 10. From the 25, Blackman to throw. This time's got all sorts of protection, and it'll still be dropped. Albert Huggins. Got to be a coverage sack there. Well, this is nothing new for Justin Blackman. It's been all day long, and part of it is his protection. Part of it is his decision. Should have thrown that ball in the flat right there. This is on Jimbo Fisher, in my opinion, trying to throw a deep drop from your own end zone. Escaped uh, a mistake there. That was his only completion, the, the touch pass to Nooney Murray, and Clemson now with its fourth sack on the game already in the first half. Second and 15. Blackman, and it's knocked away by Austin Bryant. Nearly made a very athletic interception. Reese, I got to ask you on that one completion that we that we saw there, and there got to be people at home wondering why shovel it three inches in front of you on that kind of jet action, as opposed to handing it to him. What advantage is there yeah, to that? Yeah, it's a great question. So if you try to hand it to him and the ball gets on the ground, it's a fumble. But if you touch it to him, now it's a pass. So if he drops it, it's an incomplete pass and no problem. And there's your answer, America. You're welcome. <laughs> Third and 15. If that's his only completion of the day, they got big problems. They might already have big problems. Here's Akers. Chad Smith makes the stop for Clemson. Fourth down. That was interesting there on that drive. They had two backup linebackers in the game. Clemson did Chad Smith, as you mentioned, a redshirt sophomore, and James Skalski. So you have no Kendall Joseph uh, playing in this game. And I think they've made the decision to kind of give him a week of rest. And so J.D. Davis and some of these backups at linebacker, we were talking with Brent Venables about that. He wants to play more players because he wants to have two whole units of guys that are ready to play as this season goes on. Logan Tyler will put it in the air. And this time Ray Ray McLeod will call for the fair catch. Florida State has just 24 yards of offense on 21 offensive snaps. As for the defense, doing everything they possibly can to stay in this game. Derek Nadi, as we mentioned in the open, he, he splits a double team right there. That's just an unbelievable amount of strength. And Todd, this, this is a guy, I'm sure you got him on your board, but he's got to be rising up. He's rising. He really is. He's, he's taking his game to another level. Last year, he was really good at just taking on blocks and allowing linebackers to make plays. He's having to make plays, and he's doing it this year. Great job using his hands, I think, is the big difference from a year ago. Came up with a big sack on the final drive one week ago to cement that victory against Syracuse. Bryant will keep it and push forward for about a yard. And there is Derek Nadi, as if you knew Nick Shea was helping him rise up his big board. You just can't move him. I mean, he, he's so strong. He's 6'1", 310 pounds. And he's right here. He's always going to be right over the center, Falsinelli. And he just pushes him back, pushes him back with one arm. And where are you going to go if you're Kelly Bryant? I mean, it's, it's impressive. Second and nine. Here's Bryant out of the flat for Feaster. And bring up a third down, Matthew Thomas. Todd, I mentioned in the open, I think people would be surprised. You know, you think about Florida State's three and five record, you, they probably the same number of NFL players on the field today as number four Clemson. They do, and that's the thing that's frustrating. And if you're a defender for Florida State, it's extra frustrating because talented and outside of that Boston College game, the effort has been really good. It's just when you're averaging 18.6 points a game and making mistakes on offense, it's really hard. Third and five, here they come. Brian will take a shot. Somebody got knocked down. And there was a flag on the play. Derek Nadi administering the hit on Bryant. And we'll check the marker. Looked like the receiver might have gotten. Well, you had Stanford Samuel, the corner, that was lined up in the slot. And, and you're right, the slot receiver went down. During the pass, personal foul, face mask number eight on the defense. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. That's Stanford Samuels, the true freshman from Pembroke Pines, Florida. 
point when Todd was talking about you know the penalties and that's hard I mean you're going up against Hunter Renfro one of the quickest receivers and most experienced receivers in all of college football but, but this is this is where Florida State is on a third down they had Nazar Rudin covering him gave up a first down it's two freshmen Ryan fakes the pitch and a throw across the middle able to hook up with DJ Greenlee for a big completion 32 to Greenlee. That might be his first catch of the season. Here's Nazar Rodin, another true freshman. Watch the reaction to the pitch. I mean, it's just one step, and that's all it takes for Greenlee to get down the middle of the field. On first down and 10. Inside the 20. On the ground. Adam Choice. And he'll carry Derwin James for a few. But you see it's the combination, right, of young players penalties turnovers it's the same story for for Florida State and against a team like Clemson in this environment uh, they can run you out of the stadium and hurry if you're going to do those things no it's not just the quarterback that's the easy lazy narrative that that's the reason for all of Florida State's problems this season first and goal upcoming as Clemson is looking for more I don't think you're going to see any more of the zone reads here inside the 10 yard line. I think you're going to see straight handoff or you're going to see Kelly Bryant keeping the football. Ryan will hand it off to Adam Choice. Down by the goal line. Josh Sweat made the tackle. Dabo Sweeney said. When Florida State dips their toe in the pool today in Clemson, he wants it to be real cold. Because when it's really cold, you don't want to go swimming. That ball is out again, and Florida State trying to recover. Brian Burns again knocked it free. There were four white jerseys there to recover for Florida State, and I'm not sure any of them got it. Wow. It was the same play, Steve, the same play they fumbled on earlier in the game, and they call it again. Brian Burns does the same thing coming off the edge, 99. This time, Kelly Bryant tries to keep it, hadn't secured it, and Matthew Thomas tries to pick it up and run. And Grace, this is the frustration. I mean, it's just not smart football. Get on that ball. It's a critical situation. Yeah, but Todd, they, their offense is so inept, right? They're trying to make a play. I can't fault them for that. And it's still Clemson's football back of the end zone. It could be. I'm sorry, guys. I agree, I agree with Todd. Yeah. That's a microcosm of the season for Florida State. They're the only players around the football, yeah. and they still can't come up with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't fault Matthew Thomas for trying to pick that ball. There's nobody left. He's going to run for a touchdown and get himself back in the game. I mean, they just they just got the same turnover two two series ago and didn't do anything with it. So so Clemson has fumbled at the Florida State 2 and the Florida State 1. Will Sweeney is the holder. 26-yard field goal attempt for Alex Spence. And Spence bangs it through. Spence has been perfect from 30 yards or closer. Outside of the 30 yards, it's been a bit of an issue. This is all Florida State's football. Until it isn't. And it's three more for Clemson. Coming up later here on ESPN, real showdown tonight. One of those seven top 25 matchups. Alabama on the road against Mississippi State. Coverage begins 7 Eastern. Streaming live on the ESPN app. And then top ranked boxing is back tonight. We've got two main events for you. The action starting at 10.30 Eastern right here on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Make it 17-0 in favor of the defending national champs. Feels like it should be a whole lot more than that. Here's Keith Gavin from the 10. Trying to find a seam. And he gets out to the 26-yard line. We'll check in with Adnan Verk. Keith 
All right, we look forward to that. According to the Football Power Index, the FPI, Clemson had the hard, second hardest strength of schedule in all of college football. Would you be surprised to learn that, that Florida State had the single toughest schedule? I think it's a product of how good the uh, ACC is this year, right? The Pac-12 has been down. You could argue that the Big Ten has been down a little bit. Uh, but certainly the ACC with teams like NC State, even Wake Forest, BC, they've all been really good. First down and 10. After the penalty on the return, backs him up. Here's Blackman, who is not much of a running quarterback. He'll run out and pick up six. Got to get something here for Florida State. Last two minutes of the first half, it's been really ugly. But if you can salvage something here, you got to get some kind of momentum if you want to stay in this game. Second down and four. Blackman the pop. Now he'll release and complete to Keith Gavin. If I'm Brent Venables, I am not going to just sit back and allow this young quarterback to get any kind of rhythm. I'm going to keep the pressure on, continue to blitz, continue to hit him in the backfield. First down and 10. Here's the pressure. Blackman with people coming at him, throwing and completing. So finally, back-to-back -back completions. Back-to-back -back true completions. His only completions of the first half. Yeah. Florida State will take a timeout with 46 seconds left in the half. Time to check our Wells Fargo innovations of better. How about the Clemson weight room? Home to the DXA, this machine, one of only six in the whole country, is designed to assess the athlete's body mass composition, revealing their exact percentage of fat, muscle, and bone density. That allows the trainers to tailor their workout and nutrition programs. I'm so glad they didn't have this when I was in school. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't ask us to do that this week. So I think this it, thing tells yeah. you what you should eat yeah. afterwards, right? Pizza? I, I asked about pizza and beer, and they said yeah, that they haven't <laughs> offered that up yet. They frowned. They said salads for you, Mache. Got your beer. And light Italian dressing, Mache. None of that blue cheese stuff. Yeah, yeah. Second and three. Here's Blackman. Take a shot. Why not? Down the field, and it's a jump ball. And Auden Tate will win a lot of those jump balls at 6-5, but not that time. Ryan Carter at 5-9 was in perfect position. Yeah, Ryan Carter, great job in good position, but more important than that, he had his eyes back to the quarterback, so he knew when to play the ball, and you don't pass interfere when you're looking back to the quarterback. That's as good as you can do it from Ryan Carter. That was the mismatch that McShay highlighted earlier. Yep. Kind of surprised they don't try that more often. It's a matter of protection as well for the quarterback. Third and three. Here's Clemson bringing some people, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Dorian O'Daniel got his hands on it. 36 seconds left in the half. You know, we haven't mentioned Dorian O'Daniel's name much, but he is an unheralded piece of this defense for Brent Venables and Clemson. He's got five sacks, ten tackles for loss, two interceptions, and he's the second-leading tackler on the team. I mean, he does it all for Clemson. Both of those interceptions were pick sixes. He's the first Clemson linebacker ever to have two pick sixes in the same season. Ran one back 44 yards against Louisville, 22 yards against Virginia Tech. Timeout, Florida State, third, final charge timeout, 30-second timeout. We'll stay here with Florida State taking their last timeout. Dabble's got to be... Uh... Overall, pretty happy with this first half. Certainly the two turnovers on mesh plays inside the five-yard line he's not going to be happy with, but he knew coming in this was a championship opportunity, champion, opportunity for them to take the Atlantic and that Florida State had talent and didn't know how they were going to show up, but certainly Clemson has handled its business in the first half. We will hear from Dabo with Todd McShay coming up at halftime. Talked about you know, Florida State dipping their toe in the water. If it's warm early on, they might want to have a pool party. <laughs> but as he said, he wants to make sure Clemson kept the pool cold and that Florida State wanted no part of that. I think if Dabo is happy with the first half, he might not sell that to McShay. He might focus on the turnovers, and they should be having a much, much bigger lead. 
Renfro will let it bounce. And it takes an excellent Florida State bounce. Back and take a look at the first half of the quarterback of this Clemson Tiger team. Kelly Bryant getting that ball out of his hand pretty quick. And I think that's a good recipe against the front uh, for Florida State. That's good rushing the passer. The quick passing game is a good strategy. And if uh, Kelly Bryant keeps getting hit, get rid of it. Get out of your hand. That's the one of the best ways to neutralize a, a good pass rush. You can use your snap count, misdirection, screen game. And the last one, probably the, the one that's used the least, is the quick game. Officially, that'll go as a 47-yard punt, benefiting from the long roll. Maybe the best news for Florida State about that first half is they'll get the football to start the third quarter. Halftime here at Death Valley, 17-0 Clemson. We'll step aside, send you back to Adnan, Joey, and Jesse in our studio. You're watching Veterans Week coverage on ESPN, brought to you by USAA. Indeed, you're watching ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation View as part of our Veterans Week on ESPN, brought to you by USSA. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. In the first half, you are watching Clemson blank Florida State to the tune of 17 nothing as welcome to the broadcast booth Steve Levy along with Brian Greasy Todd McShay will join us shortly it's the first time since 2003 that Clemson has shut out Florida State in the first half and of course they play every year they held the Seminoles to 46 yards of offense in that first half. yeah and really it's been their front seven and the pressure on James Blackman he was hit seven times four sacks and it's hard to play quarterback when you're getting hit like this this was the first fumble turnover of the game doesn't see Trey Lamar, doesn't see the defense, takes a big hit. Austin Bryant with great effort, just fighting to the quarterback. James Blackman holding the ball. You can't hold it against this defense. And then Cleveland Farrell in his own end zone, trying to throw this ball out on a big third down, and he's lucky that they got the ball back here. But you can't play quarterback under those kind of conditions. You see the hits, you see the sacks, and that's been the difference in the game. As you look at our first half stats, brought to you by Hooters. I have a second half statistic. Would you be surprised to know that Florida State has not scored a third quarter touchdown all season long? I don't think I am that surprised to be totally honest with you. All right, we'll see what else I have. We'll see if I have something okay. else I can Thank surprise you, you with. <laughs> Florida State will open with the football. They'll start out at their own 25 yard line to open up quarter number three. With the fourth ranked Tigers up 17 to nothing. Todd McShay. Uh, I'm just curious because we saw on tape, Brian, a lot of times with Florida State was using max protection, two tight ends, bunch sets. I'm surprised that they came out in this game against a defense that can get so much pressure on your quarterback and, and haven't used more of those. Yeah, you gotta, you have to neutralize the, the pressure up front from Clemson defensively, whether that's with the screen game, which is another big surprise to me, Todd. They haven't used the screen at all. One of the best ways to neutralize a pass rush. So I expect Jimbo Fisher to make those adjustments. First down and 10 from the 25. Here's Blackman to come out throwing and completing. Able to hit Auden Tate, and he'll stay on his feet and have first down yardage. Tate able to make J.D. Davis miss, and this feels like a big possession in how the rest of this game will go. Well, I could imagine, you know, the, the message from Jimbo Fisher in the locker room at halftime is, you know, you have to find your why. He told us that yesterday. Our team has to find their why. Why do you play? Why are you going to go out there and lay it on the line for your, for your team, right? You, you, don't, you don't have a, a championship to go to, but you have pride here in the second half, and if they don't come out with their best game here in the second half, they're going to get run out of the stadium. Just the fourth first down for the Seminoles in the game. Tate had his first reception, and now it's a second completion in a row to Cam Akers, but he'll lose on the play. And there is a flag down. I think they're going to get Cleveland Farrell for a late hit on the quarterback. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 99 defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Protect the quarterback, and you know sometimes these defensive line they, they smell blood in the water, and they want to get in the backfield. And that, I think that that could have been a no call there. That was a continuation to me of a pass rush. 
Cleveland Farrell's one of those personality players on that Clemson defense. He's the only player in the country to have five tackles for losses in more than one game. You see his sleeve there. He writes uh, motivational uh, things on his sleeve. He's telling us yesterday, he's, I don't have any tattoos. I couldn't really get to pull the trigger on the tattoo, so I just write messages to myself on my sleeve. That's a good idea. Dream with me, baby. Incomplete. Blackman airmailed that one. And it's good. And the upside of not getting the tattoo is you can change it every week. Absolutely. Yeah, the dream with me, baby. You see that right there. That's, uh, you know, he's from Richmond, Virginia, and he felt like he's living his inspiration to uh, a lot of young kids that growing up in Richmond, it's a tough place to grow up and wants them to feel a part of where he's going. He's the youngest of nine. His brother's named Marky, Ricky, Danny, Terry, Mikey, Davey, Timmy, Tommy, Joey, oh, Robbie, okay. Johnny, and Brian. Okay, we got it. Uh, there may be yeah, some sisters, maybe those aren't their names, but he is the youngest of nine. First time across midfield for Florida State. And they're going the wrong way. And now they're on their own side of the field. Cleveland Carroll with the tackle. Well, as talented as Cam Akers is, and he's talented, he's going to have a great career at Florida State. But he's not getting the... The supporting cast up front, this offensive line has been overmatched for Florida State in this game. Third and 12, getting loud. That's Patrick in the backfield now, to the left of Blackman. Picked up the wrong man, still able to complete. Nooney Murray, that throw was on the money. And Blackman will pick himself up off the turf. Again, it was Cleveland Farrell on the hit on the quarterback. You can see clear that Farrell comes from his end position, and this is as tough as it gets. That, that is not a good feeling at all. <laughs> but you know what? This is what you build leadership off of, toughness. And James Blackman has taken some huge hits early in this game. And for him to stand in there and continue to deliver, He's got my respect. 18 yard gain. That's the longest play from scrimmage for Florida State. Handoff to Jacquez Patrick. And he'll suffer a loss on the play. Christian Wilkins comes up to make the tackle. Wilkins is a guy who last year was on the outside, had all those gaudy stats. He's moved inside now. His numbers have taken a hit. But people who know, know all they need to about Christian Wilkins. Yeah, you know what about Christian Wilkins on the field, off the field is what really impresses me. He is the unquestioned leader, not just of this defense, but of this team. He has that personality, but he also has the leadership, and he's the total package. Second 12 to 35. Blackman able to complete to Murray. And they're just short of the first down. It'll be a third and short. And you see this confidence for James Blackman on this drive alone, right? Starting to, to burgeon. And I think Jimbo Fisher's made the right adjustments at half. Get the ball out of your hand quick. How can they finish in the red zone? That's Vickers in front of Patrick in the backfield. Tate shifts, and they hand off to the second man through Patrick, and he's not going to get there. Van Smith was the first man on it, and Orange brings up a fourth down. Great effort by Patrick. I don't think there's any, any hesitation or questions from Jimbo Fisher. He's going to go for it here. The question is, I don't think you can just turn around and hand it to Patrick and think you're going to get a first down. You might have to get to the edge of the perimeter. Because this defensive front with Wilkins and Huggins and Pinckney, Farrell and others, it's, they haven't had any success running between the tackles. Reese, no decision here. You don't want points on the, on the field. Here. You're only down two scores. Not Ten with, minutes left in the third quarter. Now with a 44-yard field goal attack. With Ricky Aguayo watching, they'll go for it on fourth and two. Let's see they get the timeout in time. There were zeros on the play clock to snap it. Timeout. Florida State, first charge timeout. Any change of the mind coming after the timeout? I don't think so. Fourth down when we come back.
another capacity crowd here in Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. 17-0 Tigers. A little pushback by Florida State here to open up the third quarter. This was that uh, fourth down. They got to play in a little bit late. Jimbo Fisher's telling them to go. You see him on the sideline, and they never got the uh, the play in before the play clock went off, and now Clemson's going to take a timeout. Clemson, first charge timeout. Back-to-back -back timeouts. See at the end here, there was a blitz coming, and Jimbo, you can see him pointing at the clock. Hey, you got to look at the clock. And, you know, James Blackman's a true freshman, and he's got a lot going on. He's trying to diagnose blitzes and pressures. And if you get to play in late to a true freshman, then that, that kind of stuff's going to happen. So Jimbo's got to be quicker, but Blackman also needs to be more aware of the play clock. I am aware that Adnan needs our attention right now. Adnan, thank you. Speedy justice right there. Back for fourth and two. Well, you got to keep an eye on Ryan Izzo, the tight end. Got a throw for it. It was wide open. Wide open, and Auden Tate couldn't bring it down. James Blackman deserves a better fate. So does Jimbo Fisher. At the timeout, you got the play that you wanted. Perfect play call, off of play action. Not, this is not just a first down. This should be a touchdown, Steve. And yeah, the ball's out there a little bit, but I mean, Auden Tate, you got to lay out for that ball, right? Whatever you got to do to get your body in position to make that play. And this has uh, been Florida State's MO all year, just a little bit short. Tate's had some foot issues, did not play last week. Had a touchdown of the first five games of the season. Could have had a touchdown there, but couldn't haul it in. So Clemson already leading 17-0. Will take over on downs. Tavian Feaster with a pickup of four. I would have kicked. Did I mention that? <laughs> yes. It's not a second guess if I said it before the play. Florida State, close losses. How many? Three or four of them this year. Here's Bryant. He swung around. Derek Noddy was there first. Now it's on Florida State's defense. The first drive here in the second half. They've played well enough in this game. I mean, the two touchdown drives that Clemson have, one was off a turnover to start the game. The other was off of a Ray Ray McLeod punt return into plus territory. So they've held their own. Third and six. Here's Brian throwing for it. Up high, and of course, Renfro brings it down. There's an exact example of what's going right for Clemson. Their guys make the play that Florida State can. And Renfro always shows up. Big games, big moments, third downs. We actually talked to him yesterday, and he said, you know, we noticed the tendency. Probably throwing too much to me on third downs. We're going to try to break away from that. I just laughed. Good luck with that. <laughs> He has two third down conversions off reception so far today. And on first down, back to the ground game to Tavian Feaster. Of course, it was Renfro who caught the touchdown pass to clinch the national championship one year ago. He estimates he has signed 4,000 copies of the Sports Illustrated cover. He said 3,000 in the first couple of weeks after the game. So it has slowed down a little bit. Well, I, can, I can tell you that he will continue to sign that for the rest of his life. I mean, that, that will never stop. Second and nine. Out to Feaster. Good for four. Break up a third down. You know, it might have all been a setup too, Todd. You know, the way you break that tendency of only throwing to him on third downs, you throw it to him on first and second right. down in addition to third down. So <laughs> he was probably trying to get the ball more. That was amazing. Speaking about gambles and coaching decisions, Dabo Sweeney with six seconds on the clock in a championship situation. Made the right call. And Renfro will live forever in the hearts and minds of the Clemson faithful. Looking for Deion Kane. Incomplete. Kane took a late shot. 
Tavares McFadden had the coverage, but Nasrul Dean came over and put a good shot on him. Yeah, and that, that, that should have never happened there. This has been the problem for Kelly Bryant. These deep throws, Todd mentioned earlier in the year they were good. Now they have, in the last month of the season, they have not been good. That was grossly underthrown, and Deion Kane shouldn't take that hit. The ball stays up in the air. If that ball's thrown on time and ahead of Deion Kane, it could be a touchdown, but that's the area, and talking with Jeff Scott, that, that Kelly Bryant has got to get better. And I don't know whether it's mental or whether the ball slips out of his hands, but that's a glaring area that needs improvement for him. Flags fly before Will Spires snap, was able to connect. Start. Offense number 47, five yard penalty, fourth down. To push Spires back. I think the question then becomes, Greece, you know, can Clemson make it to the playoff? Can they advance in the playoffs? Can they win another championship with this passing game? It's going to have to improve. You're going to have to improve. You've got to have more confidence, you know, and, and he's been good tonight throwing the ball underneath and intermediate. He's been uh, solid. It's the down the field stuff. And when you get to play great defenses, whether it's an Auburn, Georgia, Alabama, whoever, um, they're going to make you throw that ball down the field against tight man coverage. DJ Matthews from the 26. Makes a nice cut. Second nice move. And then he'll be swung backwards and eventually dropped out of the 30 yard line. It's a 37 yard punt, and it's still 17 0 Clemson. It's number one versus number two. And number four versus number five. One night, two blockbuster matchups. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Jared the Gallery of Jewelry. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Tommy had lost his previous four attempts against his dad, but on Bobby's 74th birthday, November 8th, 2003, the Tigers upset the third-ranked Seminoles. Tommy and Bobby, the first-ever father-son combination to meet as opposing head coaches. Bobby won the all-time series, as dad should, 5-4. to four. We take a look at this historic rivalry matchup brought to you by Wendy's. There you see Florida State, the early edge. Clemson has come on. The winner of the last six meetings has won the ACC championship. One of these two has represented the Atlantic in each of the last eight years. Steve, we're going to go back and take a look at uh, this last play. Ryan Carter got hit on a on a uh, special teams play. He got hit by Emmett Rice in a scary situation. Here's Carter right here. And he's coming back, and this is Emmett Rice, number 56, looks like, that hits him right in the head, and that's targeting. That is a defenseless player, and that's targeting definition, and you got Rice celebrating over that's top taunting of him. That's too. That's uh, and that's, that's a frustration thing from Rice. You're down 17 nothing, and to take a shot at a guy like that. Now, Ryan Carter's a starting corner for Clemson. They already are without Marcus Edmond and Mark Fields, so very thin coming into this game at the corner position, and that, that looked like it could have taken Ryan Carter out of this game. No place in the game for that play right there. Let's see, he's sizing him up. Yeah, he's got ill, Ill intentions the yeah. whole way. And then if, if that wasn't bad enough to then taunt on top of it. Emmett Wright is a sophomore from Miami Gardens, Florida. And we might have seen the last of Mr. Rice this afternoon. And he's over there smiling. There's nothing to smile about. During the play, there's a personal foul targeting number 56 on the receiving team. The penalty occurred at the 31-yard line. Penalty being forced 15 yards from the 31-yard line. Florida State will keep the ball. Number 56 is ejected. That's an easy one. Yeah. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's a picture of youth right there, right? You make a mistake, you hurt your team. 
could potentially hurt another opponent and you walk off the field smiling like it's no big deal. And that's a that's a leadership issue and a youthful issue. And that's a that's a disappointment in my eyes. In, in a game you're already losing 17 to nothing. Yeah, a lot of growing up to do for him. Ryan Carter being attended to. A.J. Terrell, the true freshman, checks in at corner. Again, they are thin there. We'll watch for Ray Ray McLeod to play some defense. He was called upon a week ago to play the final three plays against NC State and did a pretty nice job. Yeah, Terrell, a true freshman from Atlanta. He's got good size, 6'1", 190 pounds, but he has very little experience. So you're going right after him, right? Absolutely. First down and 10. From the 16. Here's Blackman to throw. Lofts one, middle of the field. Nothing doing. Look for Ryan Izzo as we look for Adnan Vern. How soon before they make him a wide receiver? <laughs> Stop throwing the Got ball to Josh Jackson. <laughs> People, pay attention. Dr. Greasy is speaking. Second and ten. Blackman to throw again. Lofts one, he'll just throw that one away. Wasn't under that much pressure that time. Nobody open. And I, I think, you know, certainly you see the starting corner goes out and you put Samuel in. He's outside the tackle, therefore an incomplete pass. Dabble thinks he was inside the pocket, so he doesn't agree with that call. But you think you put you put Samuel in a true freshman and, and Brent Venables is no dummy. He says, well, they're probably going to try to throw the ball. Well, why don't I play two deep defense, protect him? The problem is right now Jimbo Fisher's abandoned the run game. Cam Akers is your best player and they haven't given the ball. And really, it's only 17-0. Yeah. It's not 35 to nothing. Blackman to throw. Over the head of Izzo. And Blackman has not been accurate when he's had time to throw. No, every throw has been high. And he's been hit and hit hard. And he's not been accurate here. So right now, you know, Florida State offensively has nothing to hang their hat on. And all DeAndre Francois can do is, is watch. See here, you gotta, I think you gotta get Cam Akers back going in this game. And it might not be just turning and handing it to him, but maybe you, they haven't run a screen yet. And they're a good screen team. Get them the ball different ways. Logan Tyler's been excellent. The punter for Florida State. He'll boot one in the air. Ray Ray McLeod from his 37. Had one big return already. He'll get a few there and some bodies come in flying late. We'll step out. There is a flag down. We'll check the marker. It's a 45-yard punt. Again, Tyler has been excellent. After the play was over, personal foul. Receiving team, number 11. 15-yard penalties from where the ball was dead. Clemson will keep the ball. First down. There's a little feel of the rivalry. Florida State and Clemson. Might we expect more of this the rest of the way? We'll be right back. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. As we welcome you back, Clemson with the football and a 17 to nothing lead. First down and 10 from their own 29-yard line. Bryant going to pick that snap up to the right and throw to the left. The ETN out of the backfield. Trey Marshall able to get enough of him to knock him down. There's going to be Ryan Carter emerging from the medical tent. Good to see him out of that tent. I mean, that, that was a scary looking play. You take that hit, and you don't if you don't see it coming, and you take a helmet to helmet hit, that is very dangerous. 
out of the 45. ETN again, that time just for three yards. Bring up a third down. But you can see they took his helmet away, which means he's not going back in this football game. Second down, I beg your pardon. Second and eight. ETN stays in the block, so Bryant can throw and complete to T. Higgins for the first down. Higgins' first reception. Rodgers and Higgins, we touched on those two five-star players coming out of high school. Future stars. Mario Rodgers is T. Martin's son. T. Higgins was just named after T. Martin. <laughs> and both have star potential. Here's C.J. Fuller. I mean, it's amazing. Clemson could just roll so many guys, at you, both carrying the football and receiving. Yeah, certainly. And uh, but I, but I, we love to talk about all the skill guys. And Dabo Sweeney knows the difference in Clemson in the last three or four years, the years prior, is that offensive line. That offensive line is a catalyst, and and all these guys are beneficiaries, running backs and receivers. Bit of a high snap. And Bryant will loft to the sideline over T. Higgins head. And that depth you talk about, the offensive line grease, talking to their coaching staff, their seventh offensive lineman will get some 20 snaps yeah. a game. Well, they've, they've done this for a while now. They'll rotate in their second offensive line uh, quite a bit during the course of the entire season. You see right now John Simpson's the backup left guard. Uh, they've got Tyrone Crowder in there. Tremaine Ankrum is in the game at right tackle 73. He's a backup. They just they think they have eight or nine starting offensive linemen and they play that way. Got some backside pressure now some time trying to make people miss. And he is dropped, sacked by Brian Burns. Well the offensive line, even the second teamers gave him plenty of time there. Yeah, this is uh, this is just Kelly Bryant. Hold on to the ball a little bit. You're going to see wide open down here. This is where the ball's got to go, and it's got to go now. Like, you can't you can't keep holding it from right there. You've got to throw the ball out here, and it just doesn't get it done. I think, you know, we've seen him struggle to throw the ball down the field. And, and last week against NC State, he struggled. Uh, tonight he's struggling. I, and when you see a guy open like that and you don't pull the trigger, you start to wonder about his confidence throwing it down the field. Will Spires gets it away. Fair catch at the 10 yard line. Take a look back with our Buick Drive recap. This is the Ray Ray McLeod punt return in the first half, which set up Clemson for their second touchdown. And then they just open the gates here. They got a great block from the tight end, Chard. And Travis Etienne gets to the end zone. That was a great view, too, like he was yeah. running right into your living room. That puts you in the cleats of a safety trying to get, get him on the ground. I'm good up here, thank you. <laughs> First down and 10. See what the resistance Florida State has to offer here. Blackman comes out firing. Again, it's high, but this time Tate is able to bring that one down and bring up a second and short. It's almost like a pitcher. You know, when a pitcher gets rattled a little bit, you know, they'll be inaccurate and throw high. And in pitching, you get taken out of the ballpark. But as a quarterback, you know, once you get that uh, that ball high, now you're exposing all your, your receivers to shots from defenders in the ribs or going overthrowing balls that could be intercepted. It's always been my understanding, though, when a quarterback throws high, it could be nerves as opposed to you throwing to the right or to the left of a player. First down yard is here by Cam Akers. And I wonder, you know, is he, could he still be nervous? I understand he has not been in this kind of atmosphere. Freshman, I get that. But at this point, the nerves should be gone after that first half. I, think, I right? think it's more mechanical than anything. I, I just think that he's not following through. And maybe it's because he's taken so many hits. There you go. And, he, and he's <laughs> not, you know, he's just not used to being able to follow through. A lot of times when guys are under pressure, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks this year. It happens every year. They wind up losing their mechanics and throwing without balance and finishing the throw. Yeah, mechanics went out the window after the first five times he got drilled. <laughs> Save yourself. First down and 10. Give it to Akers. 11 carries, 42 yards going into that. That'll be a loss. Albert Huggins led the way. 
you know, when you get hit as a quarterback, it, you start to wonder if you can step into a throw because the guys are in your face. And when you don't see how he stepped behind himself there with his left foot, when you can't step confidently in stride into your throw, that's when the ball goes high. And that's what's been consistent in the second half for Blackman. Ninth Clemson tackle for loss. And again, if you're just joining us, you see James Blackman, you saw right, 6'5", 169 pounds. And he's skinnier on the field when you're standing right next to him than Time he out. even looks on TV. Second charge, timeout. Three minutes left here in the third quarter. It's all Clemson to this point. Coming up tonight here on ESPN, number two Alabama on the road. See if they'll be tested by 16th ranked Mississippi State. Tied a little banged up. Coverage kicks off 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on the ESPN app. Meanwhile, over on ABC, it's the game everybody's talking about, Notre Dame and Miami. These teams have only met three times since 1990. The Irish winning all three. You always wonder about the home field advantage, if any, the Hurricanes have in the Big Dolphin Stadium. When it's full, like it will be tonight, yep. that'll be interesting to watch. And all these Clemson fans are probably going to go home and watch that game and root for the Hurricanes. Might see you down the road a later date in the ACC championship game. Trying to go back shoulder and Trayvon Mullen on the coverage and maybe a little too good on the coverage. Flag flies. Could be some pass interference. It was Mullen on Keith Gavin. Pass interference. Defense number one. 15 yard penalty. First down. Trayvon Mullen did two out of three, three things right. He's in good position and he's looking back for the ball. Gets his hand on the ball. But the one thing he didn't do well is he didn't get the other hand off the receiver. And that's too much contact there from a DB. Now Mullen has moved over to Carter's side, so maybe he's not used to playing the other sideline mm -hmm. in terms of technique. A.J. Terrell is the other corner, and again, we'll watch for Ray Ray McLeod on defense for Clemson. Under three minutes to go, third quarter. Does Florida State have a push in them? Blackman throwing. Tight window and a catch. Pass is complete to 18. On Tate. How did he catch that ball? That, that's a big league there. throw, too. It's a good, good coverage there by Terrell, too. You know, I think that the fact that Florida State is behind 17-0 in this game has forced Jimbo Fisher to play with three wide receivers when he doesn't really want to play that way. He wants to be in two tight ends and run the ball. Second and two on the ground of Patrick. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Christian Wilkins was there to greet him. You know, Jimbo, is, he's, a, he's a pro style offense, and I think that people forget that. He wants to play with two tight ends. He wants a physical back. He wants to run the stretch, counter, and power inside, and then to make it off of it. Uh, but because of the fact that they're behind 17 0, uh, he's been forced into this passing situation with a young quarterback. See, Jimbo was trying to hide, I think, from our cameras. Hiding behind the cardboard. Fortunately, we have an extra camera or two. Here's third and two. Rushing four. Good time, and it's knocked away. Trayvon Mullen. I was going to say excellent defense, but maybe not. Flag comes in late. Again, covering Keith Gavin. That was a late flag from the back judge, and that back judge is responsible for looking at those inside slot receivers. Defense. Penalty is an automatic first down, spot of the foul. And that back judge sees the arm. Trayvon Mullen hooks the arm around the outside of Gavin, and that's what he saw in reasoning through the flag. Brian Platt is our back judge. Florida State moves across midfield for the second time of the game. Keep an eye on number 70, Cole Minshew, the right guard. He got up limping, really struggling even to get in and out of the huddle. They've been thin on that offensive line side. Brock Rubel would be the guy that comes in. They've had three injuries up front this year already. Down the middle of the field, it's caught. A beautiful ball to Nooney Murray, and he's able to haul it in. And all of a sudden, the Seminoles are knocking at the door. 
What a big time throw from James Black. You're going to see it's too deep, man under. He has to throw this ball over the linebacker, Daniel, in front of the safety. Run perfectly. And they're going fast on the ground. It's Akers. Rather, Patrick, I beg your pardon. Jack West Patrick. And you have just seen the first Florida State third quarter touchdown of the season. And they're in the game. Wow. A drive that started back on their own 10 the yard line. Seven plays, 90 yards, as you said, in a little over three and a half minutes. And how about the story of Jacquez Patrick, the determination. Two weeks ago, had a knee injury, thought his season was over. Went into the operating table, got operated on, found out that it wasn't as severe as they originally thought. And he's back on the field two weeks later and scores a touchdown. Ricky Aguayo, the extra point. A couple of first downs on pass interference. And again, the first third quarter touchdown for Florida State all season long. We've got a ball game with a minute 13 to play here in the third quarter. Some of the talk this week around Clemson, some controversy from the NC State game from a week ago. Something about a computer being on the field, on the sideline for Clemson. And then also Bradley Chubb of NC State stealing Kelly Bryant's towel. Not just once, not twice, three times. Towelgate. We were trying to get one of them drones to come in and drop some towels on the sideline. And, you know, just didn't work out. But so, you know, but on that, I, I want to I wanna launch an investigation, too. What do they do with those towels? And sure enough, uh, Dabo got a package earlier in the week, a care package from Dave Dora, the head coach at NC State. And in it, inside, <laughs> about five towels. <laughs> hey, here are your towels. Well, Dabo said, yeah, well, we're Nike. They're Adidas. You can't use these towels. He autographed a few and sent them back. And they'll uh, auction it off for charity. Travis Etienne now. So fast, able to get just out to the 20-yard line. You know, we make a lot of fun of those towels, but, I, you know, I'll tell you this. Playing quarterback, there's a lot of things a defense alignment will do to try to get in your head, get you a little bit off of your game. And I thought Bradley Chubb, that was not just innocuous, right? He was absolutely trying to get in the head of Kelly Bryant. And I think he did. I think he did it. You know, Kelly Bryant has worst game of the year yes. by Dabo Sweeney's admission. Said he was awful. Yeah, and, and so I think it affected him, certainly. So, did anybody ever take your towel? Did you, did you have a towel? Were you one of those guys? They had? would take my mouthpiece, right? So Come if on! I, if my mouthpiece, oh yeah. The Raiders, the, Raiders were, the Raiders were known for that. Well, they would just pick it up and throw it as far as they could. And then my mouthpiece gone for the day. A little backup mouthpiece on the sideline? Something tells me someone got you in there. <laughs> Deion Kane on the receiving end. The crowd wanting a penalty for a late hit. Swinging him out of bounds, Tavares McFadden had the coverage. You can feel the tenor of this game. Oh, this yeah. Game. If Florida State can get another stop here or even better turnover, this game could change dramatically. Second and six. Brian will keep it. And have first down yardage. And he's got five Seminoles that land on top of him. Final 50 seconds of the third quarter. I'm Charles Kelly, defensive coordinator. I'm going to let my corners, both Levante Taylor and Tavares McFadden, play man to man, and I'm going to focus on stopping number two, run the football. Thought about running, and now he'll throw it away. Brian Burns had the pressure. You see Charles Kelly. It's been a tough year for him. They came into this season, people forget, they thought this defense would be one of the best in all of college football. They've been on the field a lot because this offense hasn't been able to sustain drives and score points. They've got the talent to stop this Clemson team. See if they have the energy left in the fourth quarter. Ryan will take some more people on and take another hit. Dontavious Jackson, the stick, his first tackle. Bring up a third down, and we might have seen the last play of 
quarter number three. Yeah, I start to wonder about the number of hits that Kelly Bryant takes. Last week was a very physical game. He took hit after hit from Chubb and company. And I think he knows at this point in a 10 point game, the fourth quarter might just be as many hits this week as it was last week. Well, it looked like Clemson had this game in hand. No trouble at all. And then James Blackman found Nooney Mori for a big game. And Jacquez Patrick punched it in. 10 point game going to the fourth. With producer Josh Hoffman, director Mike Schwab, Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, as we open up quarter number four. And the tenor and tone of this game has drastically changed. It's a 10 point ball game. Playoff football now, right? You got a fourth quarter of these games. You got to close it out. Here's Bryant to throw. Nobody's home. Brings up fourth down. Ray Ray McLeod, the intended target. Levante Taylor had the coverage. Yeah, that's that's knowing the tendency, right? Knowing the tendency on third down, trying to get the ball to Renfro. So you put one of your best players, Derwin James, on him, right? And, and you can't get that completion. You get a big stop. Three consecutive punts upcoming. Will Spires is starting to get a workout here. And you get the sense Clemson didn't think this would be so difficult. As difficult as it is. Spires back at a 17, angling to the right. And that'll take a bounce. And it's scooped up by DJ Matthews down the sideline. He's walloped out of bounds to the 40, and a flag comes in late. Might have been already on that chalk. And that'll be a very big penalty if it goes that way. There's a lot of conversation for a late hit. Yeah, you, you, guys, you guys can see the replay live just down here on the field. It, it looked like his momentum was already carrying him. I, I don't know. They may overturn this. Yeah, they want to get away from Dabo. Smart idea. First and foremost. All I got was, are you kidding me? That ball squirted kind of funny on the ground. It looked like it might have hit a player. I don't know if it was a Clemson player. There is no foul for a late hit out of bounds. First down. Let's go back and take a look here. It's Cornell Powell, number 17. Yep, that ball did hit his foot. That's why it kind of bounced funny. And then Matthews trying to get upfield. Steps out of bounds, and uh, I think that's a good call. I'll lay off that. So here we go. Florida State down 10. To start the fourth with the football, an excellent starting field position. Here's Blackman trying to step up, and he's taken down. Christian Wilkins leading the way. Yeah, I'm not sure why you would try to throw a drop back pass in this situation if you're Jimbo Fisher. This, this offensive line, it's Minshew, as Todd mentioned, already gimpy on that ankle, trying to block the one of the best defensive tackles in college football. Throw a screen. Get the ball to Akers' hands in space and let him make a, make a play for it. Fifth Clemson sack of the afternoon. Five different players, so they're spreading the wealth. Second and 14. Blackman under pressure again, able to get rid of it, but Akers couldn't haul it in. Third and long. That was a screen play there, Steve, right? It's trying to throw the screen. The problem is when you get in long yardage situations, defensive linemen know that. So you teach a defensive line to keep the back in. On first down, it makes more sense. When you get in long yardage, it's almost impossible. Chad Smith had the hit on Blackman that time. James Blackman's going to feel this game for a while, maybe in the next week. Third and 14. Here they come. Blackman steps up and throws a man wide open. It's Murray. Incomplete. Murray is saying he caught it. Look 
at his reaction. You can't get more wide open. Wow. You got to keep running if you're Nooney Murray, and you got to make that play. We saw with Auden Tate earlier in the game. He missed it. You got to push blitz off the edge here. First of all, James Blackman's lucky to get this ball off, but look how wide open. That's a touchdown right there. That's you got to make this play. If you're Nooney Murray and James Blackman, maybe a little better throw, put it on him, or Nooney Murray bring it down. Either way, game will be 17-14. And Florida State forced to punt. This game has been right there for the Seminoles. And they have just not been able to capitalize. Blackman's been slightly off, but his receivers just haven't bailed him out when they've had the opportunity to this point. I'm not saying Florida State should be leading this game, but they could be much closer. Absolutely they could. It was inches, a game of inches. We had the Thomas opportunity to pick up this fumble early in the game. If he picks this up, there's nobody left. He could run for a touchdown. Auden Tate was another one. Close could have been a touchdown on that last Mooney Murray play. On first down. And TTN, the ball carrier. Very close to the first down marker. And here's the Mooney Murray play one more time. I mean, just a game of inches. A little bit uh, shorter throw. A lot of times the guy's wide open like that. Young quarterback, instead of trying to make the perfect throw in stride, take a little bit off and just secure the catch. You see? And that was a sure touchdown if they make the completion. There was nobody near him. Back to Adnan Burke. Major shakeup coming. Down the sideline, and it is caught. Deion, no, Deion Kane couldn't come down with that one. Yep. Lots of near misses on both sides. I was about to say right before that play, I wonder if they're going to stay aggressive with Bryant struggling throwing the ball. There he makes the perfect throw. Kane's wide open, and Kane is. He's fought the ball for as good as he is getting open and the speed that he has. He has fought the ball a little bit this year. Called a streaky player. Got all the skills in the world. Back to the run game. ETN, not much doing there. Go with James. Jack. Streaky is not a good definition for a, for a wide receiver. Right? As a quarterback, I never wanted to you know, be a part of that. Right? You need to be consistent. We talked with Jeff Scott, co-offensive coordinator, yesterday about Neon Kane. He said, you know, he's been too inconsistent. He's got the talent, but for, for me, you need to be consistent. Mike Williams' consistency was, was what he brought to the table. And Deion Kane can make the splash plays, but then he can make plays like that, where that should have been a, a nail in the coffin in this game, and instead it's an incompletion. And Kane's a Florida kid, so playing against Florida State, they expected they would get his best effort. He's one of 13 Florida natives on the Clemson roster. Here's Kelly Bryant running right up the middle to midfield to the logo. Gain of 17. Great job by ETN helping out his quarterback. You can't play Kelly Bryant without a without a, a spy in the middle of the field. There was no linebacker left for Bryant once he got through the line of scrimmage. We haven't heard Derwin James' name called a lot today either. I thought he'd be a little bit more involved near the line of scrimmage. Handoff. ETN. Both lined it out. Keep that clock moving. But Todd, I've noticed that Clemson, when they run the football, a couple of times, they're running the ball away from Derwin James. Right. He came down late there in rotation. They're running in the opposite direction, which is smart. It's an injured player down for Florida State. And it's Hamza Nasraldeen, the true freshman who's broken into the starting lineup. Check on him when we come back.
Headman, thank you. Wisconsin. They have not beaten a ranked team all season long. Here's their opportunity today. If they can hang on and beat Iowa. Well, they did beat they did beat Northwestern, who was just now creeping in at 25 to the top 25. Yeah, ranked at the time. <laughs> Take a look at this week's rankings brought to you by Goodyear. How's, no, how's number one looking? Number one, not so good. But you know what? That's okay. They're not out of it. Even if they lose, right, they're not out of that. Because right. uh, they've already clinched the SEC East. But uh, Wisconsin's happy that Ohio State won big today, hoping that they, you know, they meet them in the Big Ten Championship with a little bit more flair. Some people believe if Wisconsin wins out, Greece, they go to the playoff. Some people don't believe that. I guess you are the latter then. <laughs> it's not a guarantee. I can I can tell you that. You can guarantee it's not a guarantee. Guarantee it's not a guarantee. Gotcha. Second and three. I take a shot. When wouldn't you? Here's Bryant on the ground. Uh, Etn is met immediately after he took the handoff to Marcus Christmas, making the stop. Marcus Christmas there, Derek Nadi, and Derwin James. They were listening to Todd. Derwin James now down around the line of scrimmage, especially in rundowns. You see him come down from the safety position. And if Christmas doesn't make that play, James is there for him. Now in this situation, third down, I'm putting Derwin James all over Hunter Renfro. I'll find Hunter Renfro. Now they've got Samuels, the true freshman on him, which makes no sense to me. Let's see. Bryant looking that way for Renfro, of course, and over his head. Wow. Stanford Samuels on the coverage. The Seminoles have life. Well, Dabo Sweeney saw that same route last week and the same result, an overthrow from Kelly Bryant in crunch time. Third down situations. He's been inconsistent. He came back later in that game last week against NC State and made the throw to Renfro on fourth down, and they got the conversion to win. But he needs to be more consistent in that situation. Well, all of a sudden, Clemson's offense has gone dry. Spires on to punt. DJ Matthews will call for the fair catch at the 15-yard line. We talked at halftime about Jimbo Fisher making some adjustments against this pass rush for Clemson. Keep it tight in and get a chip on your way out. you got to give Blackman an opportunity to see the field, step into a throw, and if you do, he can make these throws. Tight sets by Izzo. Patrick chipping his way out. Great job there. Gives the pocket to Blackman. This was the big throw to Murray that led to the only touchdown of the game for Florida State. I expect him to continue to do this as the fourth quarter winds on. Backed up at the 15. You're looking ahead, Florida State's already used two timeouts here in the second half. Auden Tate able to hang on for the completion. That'll quiet this crowd. We saw Izzo with the chip. Check out Cam Akers. Watch this hit on the outside on register, right in the ribs. That is textbook. Is that more than a chip? That's a, that's a chip with some guac. That's a chip plus. <laughs> wow. Chip and a half. That's how you break a rib there. Second and four. Here they come, right up the middle. Blackman able to get it out to Akers. Got some running room. And Cam Akers on the receive again, all the way out to the 40 before Van Smith brought him down. Great read from James Blackman, knowing where the blitz is coming from. You're going to get me once. You got me earlier in the game. Now I'm just going to release Akers. We talked about getting him the football in space in a passing game. He can make plays. It's a great read and recognition from Blackman. And greets uh, O'Daniel showed the cards too early. Yep. Allowed Blackman to make that really smart uh, decision getting the ball to his back. And that's what the dummy count does for you, right? See exactly. this dummy count right now. That was what he just did. He claps the hands and then he looks to the sideline. Off the 19-yard gain. Flip it back. Blackman's going to throw it. Another man wide open. It's Ryan Izzo down the sideline. He'll cut it. Ryan Izzo won't be caught from behind. Touchdown. It's a 60-yard score for the Seminoles. Wow. You got the sense from Jimbo Fisher. They get the sense. They get a first down. 
with Cam Akers, and then once they get out of the shadow of their own end zone, they take a shot with a trick play, and they lose sight of the big tight end Izzo, who's been quiet tonight. He's been mostly used as a blocker, and he makes one cut and finishes, and this is a ball game. Here's Ricky Aguayo. On for the extra point, and it is good. First catch today for Ryan Izzo, and it's big. Don't look now, we got a three-point game. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors, a century of innovation. In this 2013 matchup between these two schools, Jameis Winston 440 yards passing and three scores. And what is brewing here now tonight in Death Valley in a three-point game. Travis Etienne runs into his own teammate, and he stopped at the 10-yard line. Let's go back and take a look. How did Ryan Izzo get so wide open? You got Nooney Murray going to come on a sweep. You got to respect. He's their best player on the offensive side. Dorian O'Daniel has to respect that. Once you get the ball to Nooney Murray and he flips it back, look at how wide open because Daniel left Ryan Izzo, and there's nobody left. And James Blackman, give him credit. He adjusted, right? He missed the deep throw to Nooney Murray because he tried to throw it in front of him. That time he put it on the back shoulder of Izzo, made sure he could make that reception, and it turned into a touchdown. Feels like Blackman is growing up right before our very eyes. And Clemson takes over from the 10. Their worst starting field position of the game, as you might expect. Here's ETN. He'll gain four, and the Seminoles keep on hitting with 8.40 left in the game. You see James Blackman on the sideline, right? And everybody giving him a pat on the back. He's hung in there. He, I mean, I haven't seen a quarterback get hit like he got hit in the first quarter. And for him to still be in this game and throwing shots down the field, it's credit to him. Bryant to throw, and it is caught. Deion Kane makes the catch. Knocked out of bounds. That last, the coverage. that last touchdown, Steve. All the pressure now squarely back on the shoulders of Kelly Bryant and Clemson, right? This is this is their playoff game, right? They're in the national title hunt. And now all the pressure back on them to get some first down. The pitch to ETN. Got a few. Again, it's McFadden and James who come up there. Our spotter, Ben Bowman, keeps riding on my pad, Pitt, from last year. Remember, Clemson let Pittsburgh hang around, hang on. This game could have been over in the first half, Reese. It should have been 28-0 at halftime. Exactly. Two fumbles inside the five-yard line by Kelly Bryant. Certainly let, uh, let Florida State hang around. Second and five. Bryant with all sorts of time, able to throw and complete to Hunter Renfro. He has first down yardage, nothing new there. Seven and a half to go here in the fourth. Great job by Tony Elliott, Jeff Scott, the co-offensive coordinators, along with Davo Sweeney, of not going into a shell right here. Yes, this, this game has changed, but you can't go into a shell offensively. Throwing the ball, rolling out, moving the pocket. You know, give Kelly Bryant a one side of the field read, one to two, and let him run with his user's feet if it's not there. Uh, but they've been aggressive, and I think it's the right call. Bryant in the face of pressure could not connect on the back shoulder throw Matthew Thomas was in his face I just think back to talking to Dabo about last week and how Kelly Bryant played the worst game of his career But he showed him something and he grew up at the end of that game and maybe having some confidence in him knowing that hey He hasn't had the best game tonight either, but knowing that he can deliver in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line and on the other side, as Jimbo Fisher told us, they have not gotten stops by their defense to win these kind of games. They've been in last possession games seemingly every week, other than the Boston College game. That ball comes out! Well, Derek Hoskins knocked it free from Kelly Bryant. And Kelly Bryant had... And it's Derwin James who comes away with the football! Seminoles have it! Down three with 6.46 to play. 
Florida State came into this game with only six turnovers. That's their third one of this game. Rod or Derek Hoskins, give him credit. Josh Sweat was in there as well. There was three Clemson offensive linemen right there with an opportunity to get the ball. And Derwin James, look at him, he comes in late. And the fight and scratch and claw to get that football with a game-changing turnover for Florida State. So here we go. Call your friends. Text your relatives. Number four could be in some trouble here at home. Here's Blackman throwing fourth down the middle, intercepted! It's picked off by Van Smith! Van Smith down the sideline across midfield! Back-to-back -back turnovers! They went back to the same play. They tried to hit Mooney Murray on earlier for the first touchdown drive. And Blackman, you're going to see, here comes Murray from this side. Here's Van Smith right here. Watches Blackman. He gets ready to throw this football, and he never, never saw Van Smith. He's trying to throw the ball here, but he never sees Van Smith right there. That's a young quarterback trying to make a play and be aggressive. Van Smith made him pay. And a huge sigh of relief for Clemson and Anderson, South Carolina as well. Six and a half to go here in the fourth. Clemson by three, they get the football back. It's a 38-yard return by Smith off the pick. Clemson's offense just dried up since the start of the quarter, the third quarter. And again, nothing doing there. Feaster can't do much. Look at Jimbo Fisher with James Blackman, right? And he's saying it's first down. It's first down, right? Throw the check down. And, it, and James is trying to make a play, right? He's trying to make that splash play. And Jimbo's teaching him. And he's learning. He should be learning as a backup quarterback to DeAndre Francois, but he's learning in a big stage like this on the road. And he's saying, I thought I had him open. I never saw him. Just doesn't have the reps. So check it down if you're not absolutely sure. Off the quick change, also the turnover the play before. Second down and ten. Right, rolling to his left and completing the Hunter Renfro. He's got the first down, same old story. Fourth quarter, tight game, this Hunter Renfro time. And if I'm Kelly Bryant, I'm either going to run the ball or I'm going to throw it to number 13, and especially because Florida State has a true freshman guarding him in Stanford Samuels. Renfro has zero touchdown catches this season. Zero. 11 touchdowns in his career. Ten of them have come on the road. Only one at home, and in that one home touchdown catch, he broke his wrist on the play. Unbelievable. And he was quick to point out we won the game. <laughs> Handoff to Feaster. Stop by James. Renfro has four catches today. You will not be surprised to learn all for first downs. Under five to play now. I think uh, Dabo Sweeney's fine to kind of slow it down. They're in a the huddle. Like, they don't do this very much, right? Like, this is a group of orange bodies here. You don't see that very often, but they are happy to take as much time off the clock here under five minutes as they can up three. And if you're Florida State, you've unfortunately had to burn a couple timeouts already, basically because of young quarterback issues and, and communication issues early in this half, so only one yep. remaining. Three to snap it. Get it away. ETN stay on his feet. Travis ETN hopping over people and down to the five. Gain of 25 for Travis Etienne. Great job blocking up front. Mylon Richard, both touchdown, this touchdown earlier for Etienne. Richard had a great block and almost gets another one here. Once you get him to the second level, he's tough to bring down. There's Richard 80 on the outside on Brian Burns. Then you pull around Taylor Hearn and he gets a block on the safety, Nizreldeen, and you're in business. 
ETN, 92 rushing yards. Now remember, this is the part of the field which Clemson has already fumbled twice. Down at the other end, but inside the red zone, inside the five, actually. Here's ETN trying to power his way to the end zone with some help from his friends. Waiting for the whistle or the signal. There's the touchdown. We got a call there from the official. There may have been an inadvertent whistle. You hear that whistle come from the line judge and the umpire coming in, and then from the other side they got the signal from the headlinesman of the touchdown. But I don't think he heard the whistle. Can't review whistle. Yeah, Brian. From, from my left side, I heard the whistle before he crossed over, but it was the the referee from the right side that came running in calling for touchdown. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. There was no chance he was down. So this will be interesting. Now you can hear that whistle. And then the headlines went, I don't know. He comes in from the other side, but I don't know if he heard the whistle. At the review booth heard that whistle and put it at the one yard line. Forward progress was ruled on the field at the one half yard line. Therefore, the, the second down, one half yard line. The same progress was stopped at the one yard line, except for one official who signaled touchdown. Wow. Great effort here from ETN. And then all the guys show up. And you see, when he starts to go backwards, that's when they stop the progress. The forward progress, when he starts going backwards, I think that was a good call. And Clemson has fumbled at the two and at the one of Florida State, both in the first half. The benefit here for Clemson is they can take another 40 seconds off the clock. Unless something disastrous happens here to the Tigers. Handoff. ETN. In for the touchdown. No whistles. Only cheering. Great job by ETN finishing this drive off the mistake by James Blackman. Van Smith makes him pay after Kelly Bryant puts the ball on the ground. And extra point on the way. It is good. Respond to the pressure, right? Number four gets a little scared and come back, respond to it. Huge sigh of relief here. A little note, we asked for an address. You know what? They gave us the home address. Best news we could have got. That's yeah. a win. Yeah. Sam Burke and his family, great news, getting home. Amir Rasul for Florida State. They got one last push left in them. He stumbles out to the 27-yard line. On this Veterans Day, we pay tribute to those who have served and are currently serving, and we are fortunate enough to have these fine veterans all with us on our crew. We all get to show up in some terrific town on a Thursday and yeah. leave on a Saturday night or a Sunday. And Frankie and Tom and Phil and Marty and Artie and Joel and, and Jeff are. Thanks to them. Thank uh, you guys. Not just for yeah. working, doing a great job on the ESPN football crew, but uh, for the most important job they've ever had. Being who you are. Two of them here in the booth with yeah. Marty and uh, Joel. How lucky are we? Three minutes to go. Blackman trying to get out of it. 
And he'll lean forward for a yard. Chad Smith will fall on top of him. Under three minutes to play. And again, Florida State, they have just one timeout left. You see DeAndre Francois back there behind Jimbo Fisher. You just wonder all of the learning that's happened for James Blackman in this game. If DeAndre Francois were playing this game, how different it might be. Second and nine. Incomplete. Led his receiver just too far. There was some news coming out of Florida State this past week. Remember, they had the game that was canceled, and then it made it postponed. They're going to play on December the 2nd. They'll play Louisiana Monroe. That was postponed to the Hurricane Irma. Jimbo said his guys are guaranteed a 12th game. Why shouldn't they play a 12th yeah. game? I, and I agree. They should play that 12th game. I know there's a lot of cynics out there who think it's just so that they can have the potential to get to a bowl game, but it was on the schedule at the beginning of the year. If yes. they can do it, why wouldn't they? Chance of the sixth victory in the season. They'll have to win their final three. Nearly intercepted. That ball was knocked away. So they'll have to win their final three games. Florida State will host Delaware State, then at Florida. And then when teams are playing in their conference championship games, they'll be taking on Louisiana Monroe at home. We should point out also that's important for Louisiana Monroe. They want that game to be played. They'll be paid $1.35 million. <laughs> hey, I, I see that as win-win. Yep. Those, those bowl streak that, and the winning seasons, that's, that's all remarkable stuff. Fourth and nine. Blackman thrown on the run. And Ehrman Lane could not bring it in. Too many missed plays by the Florida receiving core, I think, could have bailed out their quarterback today. I think today. Trayvon Mullen got a hand in here. I mean, he's, he's sticking on the receiver. That's a great job by Mullen. He's had to step up with the injuries to Fields, Marcus Edmond. And he's played a whale of a game. Then they then they lose Ryan Carter in this game. So he's the only guy left at the corner position with any kind of experience. He's played a whale of a game tonight. Clemson's going to escape. They, they should have been up 28 nothing at halftime of this game. And Florida State, they let them hang around. They didn't do much offensively in the third quarter. And then the, the turnover by Kelly Bryant. But they didn't lose faith. They kept plugging away, and Van Smith comes up with the play of the game to turn the tide. Dabo has plenty of material to work with this week to keep everybody focused when the Citadel comes to town next week. Adam Choice, first down yardage. Oh, yeah, they're going to get the Citadel and then South Carolina. Now, South Carolina is playing a better brand of football. They put it on Florida today. Uh, so that's not a gimme, and I don't think, you know, this Clemson team, the way that they've played the NC State game and this one, they haven't been blowing teams out. They controlled the Georgia Tech game, I'll give you that, uh, but I don't think that this is going to be a Clemson team that's just going to blow teams out. So South Carolina will probably be a close game, and if they can get that one, it'll be hard to keep them out of the uh, Final Four. You want to give Dexter Lawrence and Kendall Joseph another week off yep. next week against the Citadel? Watch for that. It's choice again. Down of the 10. Tonight, after championship boxing, Kirk Herbstreet will break down the impact of everything that's happened on the college football playoff rankings. Interesting what number one looks like they're going to go down. What does that mean for Clemson? We'll have the Heisman race update, recap all the NBA action, also streaming on the ESPN app. That's Sports Center coming up tonight after championship boxing. Well, Auburn is still alive. <laughs> Two losses. There's no question about that. It sets up quite the uh, Iron Bowl coming up in a couple weeks. Wait, wait, so a two-loss team can get in the playoff? Absolutely, oh, if it's named oh, Auburn. Okay. <laughs> Had to change the tune a little bit there, I think, from the car ride. Adam Choice rumbling down towards the goal line. For the touchdown. And that will be an important score to some. Well, 
not only to some, I think to everybody, right? You got to win, but you also have to win convincingly because Clemson, right? They're battling the Oklahomas. They're battling the Notre Dames, right? Uh, they're battling the Miamis, the TCU, the Wisconsin. So uh, they've got to win and, and win impressively, and uh, Dabble Sweeney knows that one will help. Foot margin of victory wasn't supposed to be a factor anymore. The but eye they, test. Yes. They are human beings, not computers. This was uh, much closer than the score will look. Two touchdowns in two and a half minutes. Clemson are going to walk away with lots of confidence. But this was, you know, I know Florida State and Tallahassee, they don't want to have moral victories. They feel like, uh, you know, they're a program that thinks about championships and they want to yeah. be back on top. But this is another one of those games, right? Three losses by six points or less. This is going down, you know, not by the final score, but we know this was much closer. And Florida State probably deserved yeah. a better fate here. Yeah, well, and I think what you're learning now about Clemson is they're not just going to completely dominate teams. And as you as you look forward, if they're able to get by South Carolina and they're able to win the ACC championship, I think the thing they need to improve on is throwing the football. You remember the national championship game? Yeah. Deshaun Watson and Mike Williams put on a show. Over 400 yards passing for Deshaun Watson and three touchdowns. Mike Williams had eight catches for 94 yards and a touchdown. We have not seen that from Kelly Bryant and Deion Kane, right? You got Hunter Renfro, great possession receiver. But to me, that's the difference between last year's team at Clemson and this year's team. And, and it, they are not a lock to go into that, uh, that playoff and, and do that. So some warts on these Tigers that other people around the country certainly will notice. And, and Dabo can enjoy this. They're wearing their orange britches, as they say. They will get a, a trophy after this game for winning the Atlantic Division. Amir Rasul from the 20 out to the 30. And clearly better days are ahead for the Seminoles. They continue to go through the growing pains. And this was, a, you know, this was a big step here today, I think. Well, they've been close all year. They've been close. They just have to believe, right, in the fourth quarter. And uh, James Blackman played a physical game. He got knocked around, hit, knocked down, and he got up, kept getting up. He made one mistake in the second half, and that's what the difference is. It killed him. Final half minute to play. Blackman dumps it down for Jacquez Patrick, and that should do it. Clemson is about to clinch their third straight Atlantic Division title with a win. They've got bigger trophies in mind as they remain on track to go back to back. Every game's a playoff game the rest of the way for Clemson, so this would be considered a playoff victory against one of their arch rivals, Jimbo Fisher in Florida State. I think they'll go home tonight and flip on the Miami-Notre Dame game, and they'll be rooting hard for the Hurricanes, uh, hoping to set up uh, that matchup of highly ranked teams in the ACC championship. Final score here in Death Valley. Clemson, the ACC Atlantic Division champs. Once again, they beat Florida State 31-14. But if you watched, you know it was much closer than that. We hope you did watch. With Brian Greasy and Todd McShay, I'm Steve Levy. Send you back to Adnan Burke, along with his pals Joey and Jesse in the studio. Fellas.